centralized. <laughs> yeah, so what, what for me is structure is very simple. For example, that uh, you don't have to part the, uh, um, the locks, for example, to get the information of uh, what this web request successful or not, or who locked onto the system, but it's already a special field there um, that you're not going <coughs> to have to part. The problem that we have is normally we're using syslog. Yeah, most people are using syslog. Who uses um, syslog for, for, for logging purposes? Okay. Who's not using syslog for logging purposes? Yeah. That's okay. What? what? Uh, both syslog and um, Java logging framework. Okay. Well, I guess anyone who uses Apache or Nginx is not. <laughs> uh, yes, of, of course. Yes, you're right. So. Uh, Okay, let's, let's skip that. Um, what, what was for me structured logging? Structured logging for me is um, so that, for example, an Apache log, there you have different fields in it. Why is that that we first dump everything together into a, an Apache log and then afterwards we try to parse it and to understand what's going on? Not really helpful. That could be much nicer, much easier when it would be already written in a structured log file so that we have, for example, a field with the error code or with the locked in user or with the IP address that is already in the format, it's already there. The Apache knows this information, that's put them all together and we have later on to parse it. That is what, what structured, log file, uh, log, uh, structured logging is trying to avoid. Uh, another political question who uses syslog ng? And who uses rsyslog? Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, normally the, um, the, the too, too big uh, team that, uh, that, that you see. Um, yeah, formats. Which log formats do we have? <laughs> too many. We, we are not yet at 15, but we are coming to that. So it's, it's getting closer. Um, <coughs> The, the format that most people know when they, when they use logging is syslog. Yeah, so the traditional syslog, there is an uh, RFC, there are even two RFC okay. standards. The old traditional BSD based system where, uh, and, and newer one, the, I call it IETF because there's, that's what the guy that uh, standardized that, it's an RFC. Um, very nice. The old format uh, had the problem, for example, that um, the month is always written in three letters. Uh, doesn't have sub-second, uh, and, and oh, by the way, no year. I mean, it's not really important because, hey, you always know which year it is. Except when you have a very long log rotate and your log analyzers tool tells you, hey, there is an attack, and you look at it and realize, yes, that's what the attack from last year, and my log files mm -hmm. are still there. So um, it could be quite a problem. Uh, this is changed with the ETF format, sub seconds uh, time, f time zone, also quite nice, so that you know, okay, I have five servers in, in three different time zones, <laughs> someone tried to attack it, okay, yeah, but uh, when was the attack exactly? So this is quite helpful. Um, from, the <coughs> um, from the structured log formats, we have a couple to select. <coughs> um, one thing and that looked very promising was a CEE. Um, the CE is a common event expression. Uh, that's the same organization that did the, the CVE, the, the attack, when, when you have an attack. And a, they are the same guys and they try to create a an, an mechanism for structured log form. Um, very nice, in, in, in a big consortium, so a lot of people trying to do that. Went very well. It, they released a better version of the, of the new standard. Uh, and then they're running out of funding, and now we have this better version of a, of a, a definition, and yeah, the question is how it goes on. Um, the project Lumberjack is an open source project, including Red Hat and a couple of other companies that are trying to bring this CE standard into, um, into open source projects. Which Lumberjack? There are unfortunately many. Well, there are unfortunately many projects that are called that. Yeah, it's called Project Lumberjack, and that's the one that's hosted at Fedora, hosted or Red Hat. I don't, you have to have a look. So yes, I know there are, uh, Lumberjack is not a unique identifier. But that is called Project Lumberjack, and the other normally don't call them that project. So that is a hint, but yes, it's a problem. Uh, CE is based on uh, JSON, and their, their idea is quite simple. We take the normal uh, IETF syslog, and instead of the free field, the, the normal text field, we simply put a JSON 
information into it. Um, and um, yeah, and then, then we can parse it and we have advantages that we can use a normal syslog infrastructure, but we can use <coughs> structured blocking. Uh, another also on a base, base, base format, Scale from the Greylock developers. Um, fun part is with Scale you have two different versions of this protocol, version 1.0 and 1.1. Um, and the other one that also said, oh yeah, we need more of these uh, uh, formats was the Logstash. They also have a version 0 and a version 1. So uh, already we have um, five different structured um, <coughs> protocol standards uh, for structured log files. The nice thing is they're all based on JSON. So it's when you have it in one of these formats, it's very easy to con convert from one to the other. Um, that is a, a quite nice part. And because, hey, five is not enough, um, we also had Leonardware, as it was called. Um, <laughs> Systemd has also their own logging format. No, um, they, the nice thing here is also when it's already in a structural uh, uh, format, uh, there is already a um, system D journal to, I think it's Logstash uh, converter, so simply to read the stuff and send it to, to in, in, out into the Logstash font. Yeah, what is the, how is the uh, log messages are, are handled? Um, most, in most cases, um, what we have here is we have our program, the, whatever program there is, and it sends out data, and most of them, or a lot of them, are using syslog. Um, not all of them, I know, but a lot of them. Um, so you have different possibilities what you can do here. One is that you can take syslog and do on the machine the uh, transformation, so that you see, okay, we have a lot of uh, unstructured <coughs> log files from my syslog, and now I try to have a rule-based set to specify, okay, hey, I know how this is, this kind of log message, and I now try to to uh, parse it and put it into into the separate fields. That's had the advantage that it's uh, very good distributed. So uh, the other possibility is put it into one place and first collect all the syslog messages, and then try to uh, to to uh, transform all of them. That's the problem is that you need a huge machine to do that. Depends on what you want to do. Um, Sometimes this is better, sometimes this is better for us, for example. As I said, German stock exchange is nothing where you can say, ah, oh, yeah, okay, we, we throw a couple of milliseconds time on it. Um, in the high trading market, that is ages. So we, of course, do something like that. So first send it out and then try to analyze it. Um, of course, we also have some program, uh, programs that are not using syslog. Apache, for example, a um, couple of mail servers. Uh, they're writing into file, and then is what, what I call it collector or shipper. Uh, those are tools that simply read the data uh, from the log file and then send it through the, to the transportation, uh, transformation to the normalization. We also have a couple of programs that can automatically send the data already in a, um, their, their own. Um, and to tell you the truth, I cannot tell. I know there are a couple of plugins for Log4j that can do that. But these are all programs that are sending the data unstructured. When we have programs that are already sending them structured, then of course we can then send it directly to the analysis part. Um, here we can do some, some analysis, maybe some conver con uh, conversion, and then we put the whole thing into a storage. And the storage, in most cases, we will see uh, is one storage. Uh, it's Elasticsearch. That's what you see primarily here uh, as a as storage mechanism. And then we have, of course, an output. The output, uh, normally a web page, of course, uh, maybe a Nagios check, graphite, stats, and stuff like that. Um, another thing that I will talk about later is here the yellow lines. These are all transport lines, and there we have different possibilities how we can transport the data. And this is where we start with the different uh, transports, of course, the most famous one is syslog because this is including not only the program but also a way how to transport the data. Um, syslog, of course, I don't think anyone wants to really use syslog UDP based anymore. I think we all prefer the TCP way. Yes, there are special cases where this is required and where you like that, but in most cases I think we can agree that TCP is what you want. Uh, but the problem with TCP still is when you send data out, you cannot be sure that 
really arrived there because hey, when it lines cuts down, then it's possible that it was only in your buffer, not on the other side. So, you, uh, and the syslog, uh, our syslog developer uh, added a um, uh, reliable syslog protocol on top of syslog called RELP uh, to make sure that it's um, that it's working. The syslog ng people have something similar, but it's not part of the open source version, but only in the uh, available in the paid version. So yes. it's not. They can do TCP as well as as well as TLS encryption. So no, no, but the reliable no, no, the reliable, the reliable. that is paid and that is only available in the paid version. Yes, I can TLS. Can and, TCP and yeah, of course. It's by the way, it's uh, required for the ETF standard. Yeah. They said you have to be able to to do that. Uh, another transport that we see a, a lot of uh, explanations and a lot of book stuff like that is Redis. The big advantage is it's very easy to set up. And Redis is a, a NoSQL database and it's primarily in this case used as a subscriber mechanism. Um, the, when you really want to use a real subscribing mechanism, uh, then you use AMQP or STOM, so ActiveMQ, RabbitMQ, Cupid, or uh, this kind of stuff. Um, what you also see quite often is serial MQ. So uh, the problem with uh, active uh, with with MQP and Storm, uh, you need special dedicated broker, that server where that handling the messages. With serial MQ, that is serial MQ is in the library, and then they talk directly with each other. Um, the problem with serial MQ is no encryption, so that's kind of problem. It depends on which area you work, in. but it's log messages, and I mean there are normally there are sensitive data in it. There's also again the lumberjack. So the second time we have lumberjack as a very small transport protocol written by a developer of Logstash that does encryption reliability, but is not based on Syslog, but on their complete own. They recently renamed it to Logstash Shipper. Oh, they renamed it. Yeah. Okay, Logstash <coughs> Shipper. Okay, yeah. thanks. Uh, <laughs> to remember to change that. Um, yeah, quite nice, um, very small, very fast, so um, <coughs> it can be quite helpful. Uh, from the storage side, I already said, most of the storage stuff is done in an Elasticsearch. Um, there are a couple of, of tools that I will show here. Is uh, MySQL, um, but that is uh, primarily stuff that is quite old. Um, still developed, but they're quite old, and the newer stuff is more primarily used in Elasticsearch. A little bit of MongoDB here, but Greylock um, is um, a Greylock, uh, is using MongoDB for some internal stuff. Yes? Does anyone care about Lucene and Solar anymore? Sorry? Does anyone care about Lucene slash Solar anymore? <laughs> um, yeah, Elasticsearch is, when I understand it correctly, is based on Lucene. Isn't it? So. Okay. okay. From, from what I understand, it's based on Lucene, but I'm not 100% sure. Someone yes. had an Elastic Search sticker on his a, laptop. I don't, <laughs> a, I don't know if it's a fork or if they're just using it. Yeah, yeah I don't. I, okay. I, but I, I understand, I think there are Lucene underneath it. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Um, we also have a couple of shippers. I will skip through it quite quite fast. So syslog ng and R syslog both are, can, can be used as shippers, so uh, read data from a hard drive and, and send it to, to someplace else. Uh, there's a couple of, of uh, different shippers here. Fluden is something that is an <coughs> Apache project. Um, quite nice. Uh, Fluden is what is primarily used to send it in some kind of Hadoop setup. So, um, But it can also um, ha um, can send it to some other stuff as well. Uh, Fluent has a lot of plugins, so it's almost everything that, that you can send it to. Um, on in my in my thesis, um, there is a big uh, um, spreadsheet which tool can talk with which protocol. Very very helpful when you say, oh okay, I, I have this problem, this I have this input and I have this output. What is the way that I can use to to bring A to B and bring the tools together? Logstash is also a shipper as well. Um, Logstash is, we will see, is one of the most famous tools, or one of the biggest tools that, that I show here. Uh, Logstash is written in Java, so of course not everyone's, everybody wants to have it. It's Ruby. It's JRuby. Yes, but you need a JVM, let's say, this way. Um, and not everybody wants to have a JVM on every server simply to collect the log files. 
there are cases where you want that and where that's necessary, but that is a lot of people don't, don't like it. Lumberjack is developed by the Logstash people to avoid that, so this is also uh, um, uh, as, uh, working as a shipper. NXLock, that tool is a little bit strange from, from my point of view. Um, NXLock is an, an open source tool from a very small company. Um, there is a, a commercial version available, but um, there is no price, nothing in it. But it's an open source tool and has quite a lot of, of formats, including, for example, the same as Logstash. Um, both can read Windows system events. Yes, I know, maybe in this room it's not that important, but it's nice and you have all your log files in one place, so maybe you have one, if you're lucky, one uh, Windows machine, uh, and, um, and not a couple of them, then you can put them into, into one place. The analysis and normalization, so where is then the, the normalization is done, so that you, when you have the normal syslog messages, that you have to split them <coughs> up into different um, into different fields so to, to make the analysis later on easier. So, so <coughs> NG is, is very nice here um, because um, Balabit has, has a pattern DB called it. It's a really, really huge rule set how to get the information from different tools into a structured format. And I mean, that is, that is a primarily jo the biggest job that you have when you want to move from, from unstructured log file to structured log file, how to, how to convert that. And Balabit has, has a huge uh, um, pattern DB with a lot of different stuff. They put a huge uh, effort in it, very nice. Um, I'm, I always, Syslog NG, I always have this problem that it's open course, so not everything that is possible is, 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 is there. But this is something that is available in the open source version, really, really nice. Uh, our syslog has also his own normalization uh, um, mechanism. The problem is the um, the chains chains uh, or the the, the, <coughs> the rules for them are very very limited. Let's say this way: there's almost no prepared rule sets available. So uh, there you have to write everything yourself from scratch. Mm, not so nice. Logstash has Grok. Grok is, is, is a tool to make writing that stuff very, very simple. Um, also have some prepared stuff, but not as extensive as Syslog NG. Octopussy uh, is another tool. Um, they also have a very nice and very big uh, uh, database with different stuff. The problem is here, um, or the advantage is here, that uh, it's a web-based tool. So you said, oh, I have this message. You click on it, you said, okay, this is, I detect this, I know, oh, wait a second, it automatically detect this as a time and date, um, I think this is the host name, and oh, what is that? Oh, the, and then you can click to your, your rule set together. Uh, I will talk about Octopussy a little bit later as well, because this is great, but the rest is not so. And it's not, also has a normalization engine in, but very limited, so only some, some basic stuff that is possible. And um, yeah, the, the, it's nice that you have all this analysis, but the real important stuff you normally is what comes out. So uh, we have different outputs that we can use. Um, one is Kibana. Kibana is, uh, come, is now belongs now together with Logstash to the Elasticsearch project. Um, Kibana is a web interface to Elasticsearch. Really, uh, completely. Kibana 3 is completely written in JavaScript, so at the end you can st uh, take the HTML <coughs> from your local machine, click on it in your web browser, you tell him where is your Elasticsearch server, and the rest is done automatically. So you don't need to, to uh, have any specials, anything special running there, you only need an Elasticsearch cluster. <laughs> Problem with uh, Kibana is uh, that it doesn't have any authorization mechanisms. So, uh, Yes, everybody can click on it. Everybody that has access can do everything there, including dropping all indexes. Well, neither does Elasticsearch. What? Neither does Elasticsearch have any authorization. Yes, exactly, because it's it's the, the Kibana is simply accessing Elasticsearch, and Elasticsearch doesn't have an, a real authentication mechanism. There is a plugin for some simple username, password stuff, but the problem is you cannot. It's there's no separation between am I allowed to read stuff and can am I allowed to delete uh, indexes. That is not separated. So uh, everyone who can read it can delete all the indexes. So that's the reason for, for commercial usage. Otherwise, Kibana 3 is great. I, will, I hope the internet connection is fast enough 
I, I can show you a little bit about that. I encountered mention of some projects of uh, proxies that can understand JSON and do some. You're allowed to do yeah, there are. Uh, I think the Kibana people understand that this is quite a big problem, so I think they're trying to uh, to, to to solve that. Uh, but at the moment, it's not. I say this way. You know, I didn't try the the master. I only tried the released stuff, and there it was not not simple possible. Maybe some <coughs> obscure stuff. But. Another tool that is uh, Greylock 2. Greylock 2 um, is also an, um, an analyzing tool and a, a, also based on uh, Elasticsearch. Uses a different internal format than um, uh, that what Kibana wants to. So Kibana and Greylock 2 works not works together, but it's a little bit uh, confusing at the beginning. Um, Greylock 2 is, an, is its own um, mechanism and has its own web server. The nice thing is you can uh, say, okay, this kind of messages I put into so-called stream, <coughs> and then you can say, okay, and this user is allowed to, to read the stream or, or see what's going on. So, for example, the developers for this web application can read everything that this web, applica uh, web application on any machine is creating, and they are allowed to see that. But they are not allowed to see, for example, the log-on messages from the underlying Unix system. This is something that, that uh, works very nice with Greylock. Greylock now is at the moment, uh, they had, did a complete new design. And uh, they're at the moment in release candidate one or two. So uh, there will be a new a version of Greylock 2 available, um, with, uh, um, which is now, from my perspective, much more powerful than it was before. Elsa is another tool, enterprise logging and search. <coughs> And archive, log, search, and archive. Um, based on MySQL, the only one here that is really based on MySQL. Um, quite nice, this is very fast. The, the query format, so what you put into the web page to query it is, from my perspective, a little bit strange. So in most cases, when you simply press enter, you get everything. And here you always have to query something to get something out. It's, but I think it's from my side, uh, personal taste. Octopussy, I already talked a little bit about it. Uh, Octopussy has also nice, very nice output. Um, the um, the interface is a little bit, yeah, it's not not uh, web, uh, uh, not the web 2.0 stuff. It's a little bit more more uh, a little bit older, but it's also quite nice. And um, together with this rule set, it creates very nice. It can separate it very nice into different different. So, what I did just now is <coughs> we had a look at all this different stuff. So I showed a little bit about the collector, transformation, uh, analyzer, storage, the transport stuff, and the output. Um, so when we put that together, <coughs> um, we have have different yeah tool tool tools that are working are not doing one thing at a time but of course are multiple times multiple things together. Elsa, as I just mentioned, <coughs> is, is one of these tools. It at the end is based on a, a very large, I think it was Perl, very large Perl program um, with MySQL and Sphinx as, as, uh, as a search engine. Um, very fast, they claim that it's very fast. I did some check checks and um, but then I realized it's not, simply not fair to test the different tools because one is doing some analysis and the other doesn't so um, but it was really really fast and okay. the problem is that Elsa does not really do strong so when I was playing with it a few years back when it got to maybe it was doing something wrong but when it had 50 million lines of logs it wasn't fast <laughs> um, I okay that is that is possible uh, I only yeah, but I put, I don't know, 1.2 million lines into it or something like that. Um, but uh, the, the, pr the problem here is um, you put it in and it first put everything into a cache. And then it starts to put it into the database. So it's, of course, when you say here you have 5 million, he puts 5 million messages into its buffer. Then you stop testing and then he starts analyzing it. And three, three hours later, maybe he has imported it or not. So that's the reason why it makes it very, very hard. The problem is it does not really do any structure. 
so uh, structured log files are not really used and you need Google so you need an internet access because part of the images and stuff like that, that comes from Google so when you have a ma machine that is not connected to the internet <coughs> do you really want a local installation requesting data but if you, do, if you want to, to share your log files contents with Google no, it's not that bad. It's simply some CSS, CSS file and images and stuff like that. But yes, still, I'm, I had the same feeling. So, um, the other two uh, is, is Greylock. Greylock wants really a structure. So when when you don't bring it in structure form, when the normal sysblock comes, he will take over and will convert it into a structured format. It doesn't really understand everything, so the, uh, he simply takes the whole message and put it in. But it has its own uh, um, format to say, okay, we put it, uh, um, we put it in a structured format and, and stores everything in a structured form. It has its own with gray log, with Gelf, his own gray log format uh, based on JSON and very nice to search and has the ability to separate users. So the problem that I said was with um, with Kibana. Yeah, Logstash is really nice, really. The I says Swiss pocket knife of, of log messages or for, for handling log messages. The list of input and output plugins is enormous. <laughs> There's almost no format that it doesn't not already know about. Um, together with this Kibana as a web front, it, it's really nice. Um, they also like Greylog, uh, Logstash uses Elasticsearch as, as a database. Um, the problem is with Kibana. The, the user separation is not possible, so it depends on what you're using. For us at, at Deutsche Börse, we said not a chance. We, we cannot do this. Um, we have, need some kind of control who is accessing data. Octopussy, great tool. We put everything into a structure and then we drop everything in flat files. <laughs> 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 yeah, I see. I see the first fa face palms. Um, <laughs> yes, um, it's it is that way. It's it's really bad. I, I my ideal tool <coughs> would include Octopus's um, uh, conversion tool from from structured log files to uh, from from unstructured log files to structured log file with this web front end. It's great, but after that, especially because um, yeah, flat files flat files are so cool. We put one for every machine, and then inside this directory. We put one file for every minute. Ow! <laughs> yes, I was running. I, I, my, one of my machines was running out of inodes, something that I had for years. <laughs> so otherwise, uh, Fluent is, is also a, 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 only a shipper with a lot of plugins, very nice, uh, together with a nice bow so it can transport from <laughs> strange formats into even stranger formats. Great. Puts everything together and a nice bow. Um, and NX Lock is similar, but uh, when you want some special stuff that costs extra, but the company, uh, when you want something extra, there is not an email address, only a telephone number. So it was a little bit. The web page from them is a little bit strange, but they are reacting to to bugs and stuff like that. So they are live. Um, for for the thesis, I always looked at uh, that I only take live and living uh, open source projects. So when uh, I said when when there is no commitment to Git for more than one year, it's dead. When it's no release in the last two years, it's dead. Um, so simply otherwise, there would be a huge amount. The list of this uh, project that I don't include is uh, available on the uh, on in, in the thesis. And then the, the the last overview, of course, Syslog ng. We do everything, but if you need if you need your log entries in a secure and reliable way, so you make really sure that they arrive, then you have to pay for that. Nice thing with syslog ng again, uh, there is a Windows. Yeah, you have to buy for that, but that I kind of totally understand. For Windows, there is syslog ng for Windows, which which you can use. Um, and, and it's uh, really expensive on the other one, large number of nodes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's extremely expensive. Okay. More expensive than Splunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. But it's not as powerful as Splunk. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and Arsyslog, um, I, I prefer Arsyslog of course first because it's in CentOS and in Fedora, and, um, but uh, also because they are completely open source, there is nothing that's uh, everything there. Um, what I really don't like is the old version of, um, of Arsyslog in Red Hat, but that's a normal problem. So. 
um, because there's very nice new features in the, in the current or in the Fedora Arsus log, including have, stuff like hey, we convert it automatically and puts it into. They have a wrap up for. Uh, yes, I know. Yeah, but we are. Yeah. We, we need we need support, and when you need support, and then yeah. you, yes, Arsus log is something where you say you yeah, don't want to play around with it, and, and then but then when you have a problem, they say sorry, we cannot help because we don't know, we don't see. So uh, that's a little bit. Yeah, this is for, for my overview of the, of the different tools that are available. Um, normally I try to show a little bit um, on, my, on my test platform at home, mm -hmm. so, so that you know a little bit how it looks like. Uh, this for example is Greylock, uh, by the way this is the old Greylock, the new Greylock looks a bit, little bit different, but my uh, setup for the new Greylock uh, crashed, so I um, don't know what happened there exactly. Yeah. Um, anyway, so this is uh, um, this is, for example, the data from my own, uh, which is uh, from from my server. So when you have a look, uh, yeah, the internet is too slow here. Um, and this is this is not the ideal version because what you see here is, of course, from which machine, from which host, um, the level of information, the facility, and then everything else. Of course, this is not what you normally want. You normally want to convert that into a real, so that you uh, a real structure that you can later say, okay, I want to have. Typical case: show me all mails that are from or to this email address. Yeah, when you have a, someone complains, hey, my email address is not working, and you can have look, okay, here this is the format, and then you don't want to parse everything, but you have exactly can say, hey, please look at all the to when to equals something and, or from equals something. Uh, the other tool that I have here that is Kibana 3. Let's see if how fast the internet connection is. Okay. Um, yeah, normally I would try to show you not the Kibana. Oh, <laughs> now it shows me. <laughs> now it's switched to the. This is a, a, a the split up information that you get. For example, he sees which uh, uh, software it is. Where, uh, which process ID created and stuff like that. So it already tries to read a little bit from it, but um, I'm not sure if it's here. Yeah, that is my my talk. Um, as I said, my the the um, yeah the whole text to this is available at ithover.de. Um, there you can download the PDF, um, quite large. I will also try to update this PDF with a newer version because now there, there has been a couple of changes. For example, between my release in October and now there's a new version of uh, Logstash that changed the Logstash form from version 0 to version 1. So this is not included yet, but will be when I have time. Are there any questions? Comments on something else? Uh, but it's more of a question for everybody that's using RCSOC. Has anyone encountered random crashes in the very recent versions? We have encountered where if you have an RCSOC that parses like millions of lines per day, yeah. uh, it randomly crashes and stops working. Okay, so crashing Arsys logs. Yeah. But I don't use the current one, I use the one that shipped in Red Hat, so... Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's that one, the, basically the, the latest... Uh, so the latest version, version of the CentOS <coughs> or of the Red Hat? Yeah. No, I, and we have also... Have but it's, it's only when it's dealing with really large amounts of... of uh, <coughs> I don't know how many we have, but it's more than 2,000 machines that are sending data, so... It's not, it's not not that we that, that it's idling around. So yeah, uh, there is there is one that we have, and it handles about eighty thousand lines per uh, per minute. Okay, yeah, that that's quite a lot. But um, the problem is, don't go to the Arsys log developers uh, because they said uh, no support for Asian ancient versions. So uh, if you if it's a Red Hat box, talk to Red Hat. 
Does anyone know that? Other questions? Yes? Uh, what about the underlying storage from a hardware perspective? Do you uh, um, need a RAID 10 or something to use? Um, the, the nice thing is, um, I can show that uh, how Elasticsearch works. Um, Elasticsearch is uh, so called NoSQL. Um, and it's, it's a search database and what you can do is you can split up your data, you have so-called shards and the shards can be distributed over multiple machines and then you can say please every shard has to be available twice so with that you can you, you can really you really simple uh, uh, hard disk because when one machine creates no problem everything is on a different machine as well you only with elastic search you only have to be careful about split brain situations so when you have four machines one in one data center one in the other then you need a third location to make sure that they don't go on the or that you know which one is the one that is really working because the other will stop uh, otherwise because when they go out of sync there's no feasible way to bring it back together so uh, that's a little bit uh, but there's a, um, when you go to the elastic search page there's good documentation and there's even a <coughs> I think I, I, I linked in my thesis to that uh, what you should do when you use Elasticsearch in bigger setups. Other questions? Yeah, you spoke about uh, centralizing the logs and getting the log storage uh, stored somewhere in some storage and then you have an output. What about uh, interacting with your monitoring solution? Because you want to have that output automated to trigger something like on training, well, we have less than I don't know how many requests per second or something like that. Something yeah. is wrong. We need to trigger an alert in the monitoring system. Yeah, um, I, I was <coughs> it was simply of, of time constraint when I wrote the thesis only about visual output. Uh, there is, especially with Logstash, uh, there are tools directly to create when you have can create some some requests, some some analysis, and when that happens, then automatically create an Agios. Uh, Nagios information. So there is Nagios plug in, uh, available. Um, Graylog, for example, has in, in the old version has, for example, the possibility cr to create, execute every command that you want when, when something special happens or sending mails. So um, also Logstash, for example, has uh, Stati and Graphis support, so you can directly put it into into. Uh, that kind of, of graph analysis tools. Um, so there's a lot of, of other, let's say, output. I only limited myself to the visual output, but there's a lot of other stuff there. But uh, that was not so, not part of my thesis. And Riemann for my more advanced statistical analysis. Uh, yeah, there's, um, there for, for especially for this analysis, I didn't find any really good tools where I can say, okay, um, now we, we normalize it and there are some kind of analyzers, for example in Logstash, uh, also in, 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 in Greylog, but uh, really where I can say, okay, hey, when this amount of, for example, arrow, uh, someone tries to get a password, and not only on one machine, but on different hundreds of machines. I didn't find a very good tool where I can say, hey, when someone tries to guess the same password for, for the same account on five machines, yeah. uh, then he automatically should. There is, there is quite a good tool. It's called SQL <coughs> Event Correlator from the Guardian yes. uh, estimate. Yes, or but uh, in, uh, written in Perl and doesn't. Yeah. And the problem is only works on non-structured log files. That's so you have this nice and structured, and then yes, on the other hand, you can you can always spawn off spawn off non-structured stream of data yeah. and, and analyze this and with And then doing that on, 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 quite, on quite large scale. Yeah. On and it's scale, it can be good. Yes. On the other hand, there's also OSSEC, uh, yes. which is a somewhat different kind of piece by being a post-intrusion detection system. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that um, is also in my thesis. I did not include it because their system, the log analysis is only a very small part. So if, if when it comes to that, there's also a log analyzer. That's just log reason. analyzer. <coughs> log analyzer. No, no, no. It's logalized. Uh, it's a, a, a was a closed source tool that has recently been open sourced, um, based on a, a Tomcat. Uh, so it sits on top of Tomcat. Um, I will write a log, uh, will write a blog uh, uh, entry about that as well because I just uh, learned about that yesterday. So. Uh, have, you, have you seen a look at Riemann on those uh, analysis tools? Um, not 
that I remember. Uh, it's, uh, it's recently gaining a lot of uh, interest, apparently. It's mostly for, uh, it's, well, it's again Java, although it's uh, in Java. Uh, and, uh, What's the name? Uh, Riemann. R-I-E-M-A-N-N dot I-O. Uh, and it's for, well, doing a bunch of more like statistical mathematical analysis, just for its triggers and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we will have a look. Mm -hmm. but because this is what I'm, what I'm really missing at the moment. Is anybody using Riemann? Is anyone using Riemann? <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. At least. Did you make sense out of it? I've been trying to wrap my head around it for the past couple of weeks. And just <laughs> make sense. <laughs> Did you come across a, a, I think, fairly common of task of, of log analysis? For example, we have, a, we have a customer who requires us to log user sessions that extend for a certain amount of time. For example, users that are logged in overnight or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is uh, log the user, uh, or take the user login message and in some way associate it with the matching logout message. Which seems to be something that is everyone is doing it, or everyone has to do it. Yeah, but, but not who is available to do it. Yes, exactly. Um, um, the guys over at Twitter released something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's uh, this um, session tracking. I have, for example, a similar problem with mails when you have post fix. Um, yeah, you have, you have your, yeah, you even have the ID, so you can, can, you can put it together, but finding a tool, so, but um, yeah, I started my master now, so in three years I need a master's, master uh, thesis. So, what well, I did this morning was actually putting the, putting the data into, a, into an SQL database. Yeah, yeah. doesn't scale. Yeah, that sounds like the log stash is multi line. I'm not sure how it would work. Yeah, but the problem with multi line is that it has to one after yeah. another when there is one thing in between, or in this case it's it's multiple hours. There can be days and it's, and it's uh, the problem is when, when you do this this way, um, at the end you have to be uh, have to have a look at memory usage because, of course, yeah. all open sessions uh, you need. And, so yes, but the, the problem with this uh, um, user session and, and tr track a user how long he's locked on and stuff like that, that's, that's really tricky and I don't have any, any solution. Yes. yes, it could, but it will take uh, a lot of memory. Another question, yeah. yes? Yeah. And, and you have a problem that you're saying when it shuts down. And sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about tracking events that should happen in that? Same problem with this analysis. I don't have a quick answer, so But yeah, we need a good tool for this analyzing stuff. So um, I, I, I know that for, for almost a year. pattern analyzing, what people do is they plug blocks that up with just SD and then SD to graphite. And then from graphite, you basically take the whole um, Etsy stack and your cutters and all that stuff. And there you can do pattern matching. But that's not on the actual okay. content of what time. Yeah, but, that's, but, but at least when you, for example, will log in and log out when you... When you yeah, make, those you can do there. So via Stati. Yeah. Stati and graphite. And then to graphite. And then... Yeah, that's, that's what I'm... That's, yeah, that's what I'm playing around with this and the norm with more yes. Stati. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little, at the end you, it's a little bit a little bit around the corner to, to get something that should be done directly. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Or uh, how long do how long do I have? I mean, uh, when when is the next session starting? Fifteen minutes. Yeah, in ten minutes. In ten minutes. <coughs> what stack are you actually using? <laughs> um, me myself. Um, all of it. Um, I have I have at the moment I think twelve on, on my server at home twelve machines doing log analysis. And I have all of them all of them that I've shown here are in use for the point. Um, what I'm doing at, at, at Deutsche Börse at the moment, and let's say it this way, it has to be gray lock because it has to be separated to the user who can do what. Uh, but of course, there should be something with log stash in between, especially with the Stati and all the other plugins that you can use. What the end result will look like, I don't know yet. 
<laughs> so yes, it will be a gray lock. The gray lock will do has the elastic search. That's quite sure. Do we put data directly into gray lock, or do we uh, put a lock stash in, bef uh, in between? That's something else. At the moment, the problem with lock stash is lock stash has a converter to GELF to the gray lock format. The problem is that it's using UDP. So. Um, what I would try to do is at the moment is uh, um, don't both support RELP. What? Don't both support support RELP? Uh, yes, but I I want to do the conversion, so the normalization on a log stash, and then the converted stuff the, as 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 a JSON send it to to GELF, uh, to 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 uh, Graylog. And uh, um, and what I want to, to do is um, convert the input output module into a uh, codec module, so that you, end, you can say, for example, that is what I'm hoping for, um, please put the log files in, uh, in GELF format into my AMQP and then let Greylock pull it from AMQP and, and distribute it. So this is my target, but I don't know if I made it. <laughs> um, so, um, I think yeah. they're working towards that. Yeah, I think they're <coughs> working towards that. Um, the Greylock people have a tool called Greylock Radio. That does yeah. exactly that. But I want to use not Greylock Radio, I want to use Logstash. And Logstash has kind of support for that, but I want to have it do it differently. Instead of UDP, I want to do it with MQP. Yeah. And that is not there yet. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. So, so Twitter TV, I just zip um, and something from on github.com slash Twitter zipkin. That's I P K I N. Zipkin. Yeah, it's not a trivial setup. It and what is it's Zipkin? Is correlation. Is correlation. It's tra tracking okay. tracking a user from when it enters your data center to when no elections happen. Okay. So Riemann, I always one suggestion for for analysis, and the other Zipkin from from GitHub. No, from Twitter. From Twitter. Oh, from Twitter. Twitter. On GitHub. Okay. This way. Any more questions? I have a question for yeah. uh, you talked about the other uh, specification for the sto storage and uh, elastic search. But for the analysis part, uh, what kind of uh, 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 setup uh, do we need? Yeah, the rest is uh, for the normalization is yeah, CPU, CPU, CPU. 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 <laughs> that, is, that is simple. <laughs> um, and uh, it depends on what you do that to read my law like IMQP because then you can put it in MQP, and you have multiple uh, uh, requester that can, so you can distribute over more machines, and, and whoever does a, a, a takes a request out, you can be sure it's only taken out once, uh, and then send it on. And uh, um, so, from from the analysis, that would be a CPU requirement. Maybe when you especially with this correlation, when they are long, then maybe it's a, a, a memory limit. Um, so, yeah, but at the bars it's quite simple. I don't know what how, how big the machine was. It was tremendous, and uh, I split it up. In, I think two, two or three virtual machines, and they, they handle all our all our loads. So it's, uh, I, I didn't have any real sizing because it's simply uh, enough hardware. Put it on, and it's no problem with sizing. <laughs> So I cannot tell you exactly which side. I, mean, I can tell you, but that's only with, with five machines. I don't know how many how many requests going through that. Um, I, that's running on a, a two uh, four four core, two point four gigahertz Xeon with thirty two max memory. And there's a couple of Linux machines and Windows machines running outside of that. So um, I don't have good good sizing. I just was playing a bit, although it was a bit crazy setup uh, involving uh, log stash and gray log running at the same time and both writing to the same elastic search. Uh, but uh, I was testing things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was able, well, I had to move elastic search to a physical machine uh, because the virtual machine was not uh, able to deal with it. But I'm kind of um, moderate hardware. There was a VM had two cores for bits of RAM, the uh, physical uh, was uh, I think four cores and uh, eight or sixteen bits of RAM. Uh, I was able to push that, with, uh, there wasn't much filtering, but it was about uh, 
So I also, from, from my, as I said, I made some for the pieces, I made some performance tests. And first I realized that it's not fair because too many different mechanisms to, to deal with here. Um, but uh, at the end, when you look at it, it's normally the storage that, that has the problem. Uh, and especially Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch likes a huge amount of memory. When it gets that, it's quite fast. Um, and also, there are some limits how fast uh, how fast Logstash can push data to Elastic. Yes, uh, because of the uh, because it's uh, Logstash has a, I, I don't know if it's, it's still in the current version. In the older version there was a problem that the uh, the Logstash, Logstash has an built in Elastic Search client, and then that was there were the limits there. But I think they changed that. It supposedly is much faster. But uh, let's say it this way. I would, uh, I created a very small shell script yeah. that simply creates log messages and uh, surprisingly netcat compared to Elasticsearch was, I think it was 10% slower than netcat, so, but uh, the problem is how long, so uh, if you have only short burst, that is, is fine, when you have it for, for a very long amount of time, then of course it will, uh, will slow down. Actually, I think what's actually the built-in generator for this uh, okay, I wrote my own in Python, so uh, <laughs> it was fun when you do it uh, to def zero, um, and then piping it through Netcat, then you realize how slow network is compared to what the machine can. Okay, then if there are no other questions, but otherwise I'm here for for the rest of the day, and I will next two week, uh, next two days at FOSDEM I will be at the Centos. Or Fedora booth. So, last question, yes. Uh, do you know of any of those tools you mentioned are capable of um, log storage deduplication? No, not that I know of. Yeah. Log storage deduplication. Or well, basically, the data it gets can it be duplicated or uh, does it have any? I don't, know, I don't know how internal uh, log, uh, uh, Elasticsearch works. Elasticsearch, mm -hmm. you can enable compression in Elasticsearch. Uh, I wonder. It's not the same. No, it's not the same as, as the application, yes, but no, I'm not aware of that there's any D application. Okay, then thanks for your attention and have a nice day.